Up next, what I believe is the coming coup against Benjamin Netanyahu. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, it's been it's been quite clear for some time. It's been in it? the works for yeah, a while. Been, absolutely. <laughs> but it's just it, it, yeah, it's um it's inter- it's inter- it's interesting because I do I do I'm I'm not sure if I've explained this on the show before, but I mean it bears repeating that um there there seems to be a split in people people who are critical of Israel or like the, the, the US Israel relationship, there seems to be this kind of this split, maybe not fifty fifty, but it's quite clear that there are the people who think that, well, Israel is doing everything that the US wants them to and tells yeah. them to, and that's why they keep sending weapons and, and blah blah. And then there is this other kind of usually quite anti Semitic view that Israel actually controls the US. Yeah. Um, both the positions are wrong. Um, or there is a kernel of truth in, yes. in them, right. and it's so like patron-client relationships are often ve- like very very complex, and frequently um, uh, patrons can become somewhat captive and beholden to their clients. Most uh, U.S. leaders, uh, it's it's stated, leave office with an absolute hatred of um, the Israeli government, and I think that like you know Obama was caught on tape. I think it was was it Nicolas Sarkozy or was it was yeah it was Sarkozy yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, set where Sarkozy was complaining about what an, what an asshole now this is the prime minister of France yeah sorry the then then French prime minister who's since been I think he might have been jailed but they but yeah the, it, it, he they were caught on a it, they they had mic their microphones on and they didn't know and Sarkozy said it was just going on and on about how much he hated dealing with Netanyahu and how needy and and and, yeah. and, and untrustworthy yeah and, yeah and 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 dishonest and bullying he was yeah. and then. Obama was like, "How do you think I feel after put up with this shit every day?" <laughs> like, like, and it's just like it was like one of those those rare like genuine based Obama moments. Yeah. Like, like, yeah. Like, but anyway, the point the point is is yeah that um, it, it, it is I think he has become a massive liability because he knows that that it, it, in many ways he does have the U.S. over a barrel yeah. because the like, APAC is astonishingly powerful. This is the uh, the Isra- the main American Israeli Israeli. Uh, Action committee, or yeah, like, political action political committee, yeah. and it's like every single year they, they, or I think it might even be monthly, they donate, they they publish this the, these the documents which are just like so bombshell they never get any uh, p- uh, mainstream media pick up, and it talks about how well ho- like something like a hundred percent of the polit- uh, politicians and uh, running for office we back get in. Yeah, and so like right. the problems that could be caused for the U.S. government if that aid stops flowing, and the weapons stop flowing, could be absolutely catastrophic on both on a wider like political, but also even like personal level for the people involved. And it's like the APAC's openly talking now about how we are going to get every single pro-terrorist, i.e., like anti-war, <laughs> uh, like a- anti-genocide candidate including the squad yeah. um like out of out, out of office yeah. and they're usually very effective and at they're, doing they're at war with thomas massey right now. oh yeah oh yeah, yeah absolutely and it's like so the the the, the biden administration is is or like most us us administrations is effectively a captive of of their client in netanyahu now i think that a netanyahu would be a very good fall guy for yeah. blaming for this like, absolutely horrific the horrific scenes that have been emanating from 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 Palestine since October October eighth, yeah, or uh, whenever it was, but like that the, they well, that they actually went in. But the point, yeah, the, the, but not only that, but also I do think that to a certain extent he has probably genuinely overstepped the mark, and yeah. it was like well, he already did. I mean, yeah. they already tried to get rid of him yeah. uh, before October seventh. Yeah, but it's just, it, it's also it's also as well. It's like that for Israel's pretty much all universal faults, they are actually very good at holding politicians to account for like corruption yeah. and stuff. There, there are very strict laws on all sorts of um, uh, sh- like uh, shady activities that, that are pretty commonplace in the US yeah. and Britain, say. Right of the mill corruption stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's like, there are so many scandals surrounding Netanyahu that he just manages to just, just about get away with. Yeah. So the second that he leaves office, he's going to be prosecuted and jailed yeah. for prosecution, sorry, for, for corruption in high office. So um, if they get rid of him, and then he gets sent to the slammer. Like uh, it's just, they can it, wash their hands. Of yeah, the they can just wash their hands of it, and 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 therefore, yeah, uh, outsource all of the blame to their full guy. And I'm yeah. sure that we'll probably see the same happen with uh, um, uh, Zelensky as well. So, the, sorry, oh, go ahead. Well, no, go. On. So, in this article, 
uh, I, I have quite a bit I want to go through here. It's, it's, Please do. It's, 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 uh, it's really uh, illuminating. On Tuesday, Daniel Hagari, the chief spokesman for the Israeli Defense Forces, did something extraordinary. He criticized the Israeli government. In recent days, Israeli troops have battled Hamas in parts of, the north, of northern Gaza that had been previously cleared of enemy combatants. A reporter asked Hagari if the terrorist group had been able to reassert itself because the Israeli government had not yet set up any non-Hamas Palestinian administration for those areas. The spokesperson could have dodged the question. He did not. There is no doubt that a governmental alternative to Hamas will create pressure on Hamas, he replied. But that is a question for the politi political echelon. Um, down more in the article, we have, in a televised address yesterday, Defense Minister Yov Gallant, uh, a former general and current member of Benjamin Netanyahu's Likud party, publicly rebuked the government for failing to establish a post-war plan for Gaza. Uh, yeah, yeah, that, I lost my spot. Um, Okay. Uh, he then demanded that Netanyahu personally commit to Palestinian governments for the enclave as opposed to Israeli settlement or occupation. Since October, I've been raising the issue consistently in the cabinet and have received no response, Gallant said. Um, the end of the military campaign must come together with political actions. The day after Hamas will only be achieved with Palestinian entities taking control of Gaza, accompanied by international actors, establishing a govern governing alternative to Hamas. The defense minister closed with an ultimatum. I call on Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to make a decision and declare that Israel will not establish civilian control over the Gaza Strip, that Israel will not establish military governance in the Gaza Strip, and that a governing alternative to Hamas and Gaza Strip will be raised immediately. With these words, Israeli defense <coughs> establishment effectively launched a revolt against the Netanyahu government in the dreams of the far-right flank to flood Gaza with Israeli settlers. Yesterday, at a lectern emblazoned with the word settlement, in Gaza will bring security, the far-right minister Edeman, Edemar ben Gavir told a rally of thousands that the only way to defeat Hamas is to return home to Gaza mm. and encourage voluntary immigration of its Palestinian population, a euphemism for ethnic cleansing. Mm. Uh, so we have, according to The Atlantic, an open revolt by the security establishment in, in Israel. We also have from Yinet Ynet, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce it, um, but we have an article in, the similar, in a similar vein from uh, just a few uh, days can prior. I, can I just add, just, just really ahead. quickly, like, just interject that, like, I think that the, 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 there is an enormous, the, the, the anger towards Netanyahu internally within his government, but within the kind of wider Israeli government infrastructure is like extremely well, high. Because he's discredited because the whole project. But, but, not only, but not only that, yeah, I mean, yes, he's described the whole, but even on like like basic technical points, that like they didn't think to establish like a furlough scheme for all of the people they were taking out of work and forcing to commit genocide, yeah. like like in the, in the, who were being called to duty. They did like they, the very basic things that they should that they should have done. They didn't do, and a lot. And it, I mean, Israel's economy is completely screwed uh, as a result of this, and. Entire industries are basically on the verge of bankruptcy. Um, many businesses don't have staff, um, and there's also ma there's also mass um, workforce um, collapse and brain drain from um, people running away yeah. as well. Such are the foundational flaws of a settler colonial state. Right, is is like most people who live in in Israel have joined citizenship, um, or at least can get their hands on a foreign passport, including I mean Netanyahu's family were all from Poland. And like, he, he's you know. personally from Philadelphia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. And it's, so it's just like, yeah, that like basically, um, the, it, it's very easy for people to get out. And yeah. There's been enormous waves of of, of, of quote unquote emigration, i.e., yeah. retreat um, from from settlers. So uh, and into the entirety of northern Israel is basically not inhabitable for for, for them for, for, for um zionists anymore right and it's put so yeah that like that's so you have all of these kind of like caesar he's like surrounded by like enemies like everyone yeah. everyone within the government structure has an axe to grind with him yes yeah so this uh israeli article um outlines five points of contention it calls a serious rift between netanyahu and the heads of the security establishment uh, these points are uh, the hostages. They say he's indecisive. Basically, he's indecisive on everything because he's in such a 
in between a rock and a hard place yeah, yeah, between yeah. his constituency, the far right, and the international community, which is uh, increasingly turning against him. Yeah. So these points are the hostages the day after, meaning who will govern uh, Gaza yeah. after the I mean, war. Can I, can I send you something on WhatsApp? Yeah. It's just like, it's just like really hideous. It's like this, basically, it's quite clear as well that like that trying to get agreement on the shape of a of, of a kind of post war quote unquote. Oh, but I can't pull this up. How can I pull this oh, up? Can I show it, if I whack the article? Wait, in, I think I can. If I whack the article in docs, just above Tel Aviv protest. No, it's because I'm not logged in. On. I've sent it to you. Okay. J post. It's but just above Tel Aviv protest. Where is it? It's just above Tel Aviv protest. But like, yeah, the the. the that, that there is a huge amount of, of um, jockeying over like this, the, the state of pro post-war Gaza and it looks like the US is applying pressure to Saudi Arabia to sign off on a plan whereby it will be governed by a bunch... Gaza will... It will the, the Hamas will not be in government or in any, in any position of power and will... Um, it, it will be hand-picked pro-Palestine authority puppets, Pal the Palestinian authority being a pro-Zionist foreign created, foreign trained and foreign armed um, uh, brutal um, uh, kind of quasi-state apparatus that has no support among average Palestinians whatsoever yeah. and they're, 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 the, Pal they're, they're, the, the PA security forces are trained by Britain and routinely use torture uh, against you know people uh, against protesters and stuff so it's like yeah the, the, it, 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 the, the plan is to fill um, fill, fill Gaza with quote unquote peacekeepers as well from like other countries in the region um, uh, in order to just ensure that everyone stays um, very passive and it's like I mean that that is so, so it's going to be a huge PR hit for Saudi Arabia because it pledges to the the, the, the bin Sal King Salman um, has pledged to be well we, you know, we are the it, it, he's framed the country as like we're the center of Islam and we speak for all Muslims and it's like well the overwhelming majority if not all Muslims are like support Amma yeah. like a bit, a bit of what well, they support Palestine's liberation sure. at least sure. and it's like it's it's um, so what we have yeah. what, what I pulled up so, here cool. for those who maybe can't read the uh, the caption this is an AI image uh, a generated image of Gaza found in the Prime Minister office's plan for post-war Gaza um, but moving back to yeah. um, to Ynet, we have I mean they basically identified five points of contention um, and I'm going to quote from this article now. Uh, I'm not going to scroll along with it, but I'll quote from it. All these issues are related to each other, and according to senior sources in the security establishment, Netanyahu refrained from deciding, thus preventing the IDF from acting in a way that would advance the achievement of the war's goals. As mentioned, all of these critical strategies are related and dependent on... Well, therefore, the entire security establishment, led by Minister Gallant, Chief of Staff Halavi, and, prob and probably also the head of Shin Bet, Ronan Barr and the head of Mossad, Dedi Barnea, demand that Netanyahu make decisions. Two senior sources told Ynet that if the prime minister and the expanded cabinet do not make decisions, the heads of the army and Gallant may take steps that so far have been avoided. Basically, they're saying they're, they'll do a soft coup. They'll, they will uh, oh, take yeah. things in their own hands. Oh, yeah. According to the same source, many senior IDF officials may announce within a few months that their decision to retire due to their part in the October 7th failures and this fact makes it easier for them to clarify their positions on Netanyahu. Yeah. Um, and finally, last night, we have the largest protest in Tel Aviv since October 7th. Yeah. Against, specifically against Netanyahu. Yeah. Look at the, I mean, the, you, you can't see it, Kip, but no, I've, I've, got, I've, got, I've got the massive, tweet. Up. I've got the tweet. Up. Massive yeah. size of this. Yeah. Um, so it's quite clear that Israel, uh, Israelis are fed up. Uh, the security establishment is fed up. The international community is fed up. And I think that Netanyahu's days are numbered. Yeah, yeah. No, indeed, indeed. And then they'll just get someone even worse in probably. probably. <laughs> but, like, in many but they'll ways. be able to wash their hands of the genocide, yeah, and that's yeah. the main goal. That's the main, that's the main thing. Hey, everyone. Um, if you enjoyed this video or, or any of our other content, uh, please give us a follow on Twitter or subscribe to us on YouTube. It will help us beat the algorithm oligarchs. Thank you.